Well, let's talk now to Sara Pantuliano, who's head of the Humanitarian Policy Group at the Overseas Development Institute. And Sara, you've got very interesting insight to all of this because you've studied the lessons from previous disasters. Uh, tell us what you think right now. Well, I think it is very important that organizations and governments resist the urge of, you know, what I define as the savior syndrome, you know, feeling that they can step in, go in and bypass, you know, the national structures, the government structures that are critical in ensuring that aid is well coordinated and builds on national capacity. Of course, when we see scenes like this, you know, the urge of wanting to help at whatever cost is strong. Of course, you know, the, the extent of human suffering is immense, but it's very important to remember that if you start creating parallel structures, you know, if you start flying in aid that may be unnecessary, you actually worsen the problem. Rather than and, and yet that's going to be a very difficult urge to resist, isn't it? Because in the short term, there's going to be huge kind of bureaucratic bottleneck, I imagine, for a government that's not used to dealing with such a sudden onset of relief effort from around the world. True, but it is a government that is very you know, used to this kind of crisis, this type of disasters. You know, the, the Philippines last year said 24 cyclones. I mean, people are well prepared in the Philippines precisely because it is so exposed to these kind of uh, hazards. The problem, of course, is with the magnitude of these disasters. The sheer scale of devastation would test the most season of governments in a developing, co developed context like ours. Yes, and I suppose one thing, I mean, is that the Philippines is a fairly open um, society in an open governmental form. It's got democratic accountability at various levels. So presumably that will help keep information channels open and make it more easier for outsiders to come in. Yes, but at the same time, it is a challenging task. You know, even for a government that's got a strong National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, it will be difficult, you know, to make sure that everybody feels informed um, and, you know, when people get desperate, that they feel they are being supported adequately. But again, it will be important to recognise the, the, the strength that this society has, you know, the, the level of capacity that exists and make sure that we support national processes rather than coming in with uh, separate structures. And what about coming in with staff? Because there's obviously a, a tendency to want to deliver lots of tents, food, etc. from outside. Is that what's needed? You know, that is very often rather unhelpful, even when, you know, it's the best, with the, done with the best intention. You know, sending medical supplies may sound fantastic, but actually, you know, it may not fit with the health protocols of the country that, you know, people are trying to help. People, may, you know, doctors in country may not be familiar with that kind of medicine. So the best type of aid is always, you know, donating cash to the most reputable organizations that will use it accountably. And so donate cash and so that the, those supplying aid can buy the stuff on the ground. Absolutely. But make sure that you, you donate to organisations that are credible, can do it well, not the fly-by-night agencies that arrive but really don't have the experience to deal with this kind of crisis. Sarah, thanks so much. You're welcome.